in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated if you can. Let's just take two minutes to just pray in the spirit while you are seated. The various ministrations of the spirit. That's why you came. The spirit of God is still blessing people. Just do what I ask you to do. Just sit while you are and pray in the spirit. You are receiving something. See your year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I empower you. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I empower you. I empower you. Shamarakatos kalabarikata, negate preskata likatosa si anahasabra katosia. It will be like a dream. You are being lifted by the hand of the Almighty. There is a force that is lifting you beyond the limitations of men. There is a force that is lifting your family. You came for koinonia. I speak it in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ilabarada kato shadi adamado. Shada baranda kala praske de balado. Shanda bradege de balada balada bo. Habarada galeba siara balada balada bo. The Lord is still telling me He's bringing speed. I'm doing a quick walk, a quick walk, a quick walk. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling me. A quick walk. This is the season of the quick walk. I'm doing a quick walk. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I release that grace upon this house. The grace that makes things happen fast. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we receive it. We declare a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says, for he that cometh to God must believe. First, that he exists. You are not coming to meet an idol. Number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, koinonia is not just a teaching ministry. It's not just where you come to learn. There is a spiritual impartation. You are immersed in a reality and you step out of it with an evidence that no power, no force, no devil 
can contest or deny is reality these are not shadows you will watch in wonder as you begin to see the testimonies that unfold just from the experiences you see God visits you through his word he visits you through his power leave the realm of argument where you come and you are wondering can God touch me can God bless me no it's a deposit of his grace this place is a portal it's an access point to the throne God made it so by his grace and that if you are humble enough to believe and receive just one encounter is enough you don't need to come twice one and it's impossible to leave this place tonight and not return with a testimony no no listen if this is your first time coming here i'm telling you it's impossible you will never have to come twice to have a test it doesn't matter you are under a system that is bound by a covenant this is not just something about a man's intention hallelujah lord jesus we thank you for what you have done tonight we declare that forever jesus will be lifted in this place lord more than a man may your people see jesus may they see christ lifted and glorified tonight change our lives by the power of your word in the name of jesus please just sit down everyone I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. This is not for everybody. There are specific people that this prophetic word is joy, 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 joy. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. joy for morning joy for morning mighty god we thank you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen just help those under the anointing and um, let us get to the word These are the various ways and systems in the kingdom by which God lifts men. More than the communications of men. This is a spirit communication. That God invades your spirit man and deposits something upon you. You see, God just within these few minutes has distributed so many things so many things activating gifts dimensions bringing people into realms and levels most times you may not understand what you have received until you step out of this place and then you will see possibilities activated and you will know that this one was by the finger of god hallelujah second peter chapter one let's get to the word blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord the lord is bringing restoration to someone among the ushers i just saw this now in a flash one of the ushers the Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration by the Spirit. And God is saying it will no longer be like before. 
it will no longer be like before it will no longer be like before in the name of Jesus Christ the name of Jesus Christ second Peter chapter 1 I don't know who this is for but the Lord is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word still stands what I told you must come to pass the way I said it the Lord is saying I should tell somebody my word still stands no matter what you have seen this is a prophetic word for someone and I speak by the Spirit God is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word my word still stands no matter what you have seen my word still stands i've spoken once i will not speak again my word still stands my word still stands forever O oh lord your word is settled forever O oh lord your word is settled please sit down i want you to be very sensitive to what god is doing this is not just people shouting carelessly or falling under the anointing no this is god birthing definite things in the lives of people birthing very definite things things you can see things you can relate with you will know and you can know that this one was by the hand of God second Peter chapter 1 we start from verse 2 we're reading the first three verses after from verse 2 just help those under the anointing grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ the next verse says according as his divine power hath given us all things ah, fire is burning in this house I tell you fire is burning in this house 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 all that i'm seeing in the spirit is fire just fire fire don't mind my madness just allow me to do this thing i'm just seeing fire that's what i'm seeing fire you know when these things start no matter how you try to concentrate sometimes you just continue to see um, there's a young man here you are in ministry the Lord is telling me that you are entering the realm of the miraculous right now the dimension of strange miracles God has been dealing with you for months you have been having encounters it's even part of the reasons why you came here and God is saying you are stepping into a strange dimension of miracles. Kabaruzi Kataria. Wherever they are in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the grace and the unction that brings men into dimensions of the miraculous. You will know you have come to receive something solid. You will go back to your ministry. And in the name of Jesus, you will see the hand of God in unusual ways let the sick be healed under your hand let lives let testimonies let testimonies 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 
It's like a well of fire from within your spirit. Opening up a well of fire from within your spirit. I shift you to a level of miracles, a level of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God just interrupts the service to minister to his people and it's important to be sensitive because sometimes this five, ten minutes of ministration, I know that next week is a miracle service, but sometimes you always will not have to wait for the miracle service. There are people whose situations are a matter of life and death. So it's, it's God bringing people into that realm. It's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, entirely by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So he introduces levels, realities into your life. These are the dimensions that no man can gainsay nor resist. Please sit down. Let's see if we can make progress. We have a lot to do. Our retreat starts tomorrow and Sunday. Maybe this will be the last one and then we'll trust God for grace. This lady, Kende, the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing a fire that is coming upon her and the Lord is saying he's burning everything that has been deposited into her body this is sickness sickness but in the name of Jesus I command that spirit to give way right now anyone sick here if there is anything sickness I sense a healing anointing right now sickness be healed be healed now be healed please help them be healed anything that has entered your body every deposit to manifest as sickness kabarakatash be healed i bring you the life and the power of jesus be healed it goes once and for all uncontrolled flow of blood goes now uncontrolled flow of blood it goes now once and for all it lives your life forever in the name of jesus christ the Lord is healing a breast lump. I decree and declare that lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. The Lord is breaking a circle of joblessness in a family. All of you in that family, there's not one person that has a job. But I'm seeing like a sword coming right now. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that family is. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, your season for testimony, your season for testimony, I break that circle right now. In the name of Jesus, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. I release that family. Enter your realm of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Let's continue. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 now. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. It says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. What did he give us? Exceeding great and precious promises. So how did he make us partake us through the promises? He left promises that when we access and walk in that reality we will be partaking
partakers of that divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss bless your word tonight and in the name of jesus we pray that you will increase us amen and amen last week i started teaching on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth i'll be teaching along that lines not exactly the same thing but then i want us to listen very carefully because for many people the subject of the blessings of god divine supplies wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people those who do not love god and those who don't want to grow spiritually but that is not true i took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men remember my teaching yes and that there will always be a demand by satan to give your soul in exchange for material things so it's not just that your soul listen carefully it's not just that your soul is given to the devil but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies and i gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together when your pocket begins to rise he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down are we together and that has been the system so people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money but in the name of jesus there is a generation of men and women rising by the spirit of god who will prosper even as their souls prosper Amen. and so i told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of tyre satan himself sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth and we're going to look at the second aspect today and I'm just going to talk to you two words basically that will be teaching um, along those lines and then God will grant us grace Genesis chapter 1 please Genesis chapter 1 when God made man he gave a command and the first word that man heard from God according to verse 28 and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful everybody say it after me be fruitful number two multiply number three replenish the earth number four subdue it that these four dimensions is what makes for dominion that for the saints to at any point command dominion all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences you must have the ability to be fruitful you must have the ability to multiply you must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue i'm not talking about all of those dimensions i just want to connect something i did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful please you need to get it it's very very important because i want to start building from there god is a god of increase god is a god that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful and um when the Lord mandated man to be fruitful. Please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, 
the womb or what you call fruitfulness children the womb when God told man be fruitful he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery and by so doing multiply the earth number two the mind be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful number three your hands be fruitful your hands must also be fruitful number four be fruitful your mouth your lips must also be fruitful just follow me carefully and then lastly your spirit so when God spoke to man and said be fruitful he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman he was speaking to all of these dimensions of man that the womb be fruitful the mind be fruitful the hands be fruitful the mouth be fruitful the spirit be fruitful are we together the fruit of the womb is the child the fruit of the mind is ideas and creativity please write when the womb gives birth you call the child or you call the fruit a child when the mind or your thoughts give birth you call the fruit ideas when the hands give birth you call the child work or accomplishments when the mouth gives birth you call it words when the spirit gives birth you call it character and so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer if you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agree that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together <clears throat> we rounded up in the last meeting with the daniel where daniel and the three hebrew boys came and said oh king we will not bow we know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol but we have made up our minds that our god is able to deliver us are we together and so it is possible that we conquer these spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints and i want to just guide you very briefly tonight i'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity the power of productivity this is a very scarce teaching in the body of christ and even in africa the power of productivity submitting to the government of christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of christ to the saints there is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is the name of that weapon is productivity say productivity please write this down there is a difference between value and productivity there is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity value talks of your inherent abilities value talks of your potentials value talks of your transactable skills 
that means that everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value but productivity is more than value are we together now just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded the world is full of many valuable people but in the face of economic hardship even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need are we together now it is important to be aware of value but just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints please write this down productivity is the quality or the ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful i'll take it again productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful never forget this this definition that productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful look up please everyone while value talks of your inherent abilities productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful it is not valuable people who are rewarded it is productive people are we together please you may write this down financial resources will always follow productivity not necessarily value financial resources will always move the direction of productivity productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance the ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity hmm. so god has a system for our prosperity he's a god of increase in spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack into poverty and by so doing distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom and i'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory economic victory is productivity any man any woman any church any organization that is not productive will be poor it's a law please listen carefully any man any woman any church any business any organization that fails to be productive there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality Before I discuss a few things and a few ways that God can help us to be productive, let me destroy what I call the consumer mentality. Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies and you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation it is sin everything god gives men 
he expects that they increase in the parable of the talent matthew chapter 25 the bible talks about three men who were given talents one five talent listen carefully the other two talents and then the last a talent and the bible says the one with the five went and made five more increased the other one with two went and made two more but the one with one talent returned back and said you are a hard man you reap where you didn't sow and Jesus called him a name. He didn't call him lazy man. He said, you are a wicked and unprofitable. That's the word, unprofitable. There is no gain trusting you. Wicked and unprofitable servant. Africa has been plagued and sadly, respectfully so, but sadly, our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality are we together now so the the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average african and worst of it all to an average believer the subject of productivity is not taught believers we we have been trained to ignore productivity let me tell you i think the worst scam is to expect life to give to you something the bible says give and it will be given to you that's the law it didn't say what you give is what must be given but until you give nothing should be given back to you so if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you it's amazing my brothers and my sisters how many of us many of us even seated here just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed are you getting what I'm saying now productivity so the average person thinks consumption give me let me eat it has finished Give me another one. Let me eat. It has finished. Daddy, give me this. It has finished. Productivity. We lack this grossly in Africa. Are we together now? Yeah. So people collect their salaries. And when they collect their salaries, the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months, they are back because there was no productivity. There was money, but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be finance, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality. Great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence, you become a multiplier factor. Are we together? So your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you, something happens in that family and begins to multiply. 
the greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture amazing how you can take a seed look up everybody you plant that seed are we together now and then you watch it that orange seed just give it a little time it grows the orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough are you seeing that now yes in spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds it has the stamina and a few months after maturity you begin to see oranges everywhere watch this you will pluck the oranges and after a while it will start again and you will pluck some more and there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people the trees were there before they were born yet they will still eat of it that's productivity are we together now no man who is productive becomes poor no matter what babylon wants to do or not no matter what devil no matter what charm what cause productivity is not an idea for success it's a weapon productivity is a weapon a man of God who is productive will never have empty pews a church a ministry that is productive will never go down a business that is productive will never see shame the key is productivity the key is not wishing the key is not sentiments the key is productivity the ability to convert anything small to become big productivity the ability to introduce a multiplier factor i am productive who do i use come i am productive to the degree to which i can multiply this gentleman's value his usefulness that he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life and in six months in one year I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit this is productivity are we together now let me say this respectfully any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come will be ready for empty pews the days of solidarity based on tribe based on all this are over the determining factor for impact is productivity we come from the same village will soon be a joke we have the same auntie you are my elder brother i'm your younger brother no people are desperate he said that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills and the people will say let us flow although upwards but let us flow to that mountain are we together thank you what does productivity involve let's discuss this quickly number one the first key to productivity is healthy exposure write it down the first key to productivity is exposure please whether you are standing outside whether what if you can listen listen if you can write write what's the first key it's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life to God whatever it is I was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman one testimony you were all laughing around when the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence you, you, you can see the don't feel bad my friend but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access you can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual but he said i want to start from that kindergarten give that gentleman two three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you you will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here productivity productivity anything that enters your hand multiplies anything that comes around your life increases are we together now everybody say exposure 
Listen to me. Exposure is not a gift of the Spirit. In fact, exposure is not even a gift of life at all. Exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life, you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, not, that's why I said healthy exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding he will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted listen to me that's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for god is breaking that cycle of limitation there is no basis for receiving when you can there are many people who cannot god cannot even tell them certain things it's not yet a concept that can be received they don't have a system built within them to receive it please listen very carefully exposure I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. <laughs> because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle belter. The average northerner has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure, exposure, exposure. The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it he would translate you to the realm of the spirit and say still see in any case i need you to comprehend that's what he did to abraham he kept telling abraham you will be a father of many nations abraham said amen like we're saying and god said i can't work with you you are you are empowering delay in your life and then one time he said abraham come out you have checked around and there is nothing that looks like lift up your eyes see count the stars he had been looking at the stars but he never tried counting them i'm looking for something i can use to 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 parallel what i want to do in your life so count the stars so he will start one two three, oh god one two three four five ah one god is impossible that's it he says so shall your seed be i, I have i've planted something in you that you can now relate with he says and abraham finally believed god and it was credited to him for righteousness many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited we came from a poor background now i'm not insulting you please you are born to look like your parents but you die looking like your decisions listen carefully i understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise but somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. 
it was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw if Jesus did not see anything it can be a temptation are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight everybody say exposure it is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like say Abuja or Lagos and all of that do you know why because the environment sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity so you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you and then they tell you this is a young man that owns it and subconsciously your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say Lord there has to be something about my life but in this environment no matter what level you are you are still a champion you see how bad it is before or after school you are still better than many people before or after being born again you are better than many people you waste your money they say no problem you are better than us there is nothing that challenges you so you need a healthy exposure there are people in their life who never bought cars. And the day you say we are trusting God for a car, they look at you and say, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Must you live with a car? No, you mustn't, but it's better to have a car. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now... In, he will expose you by himself that's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say my dear let me tell you what this is let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say what is this this is called this this is called that she doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home and the mother says sir is ready help me pour water on the firewood let, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience, I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rests. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed, godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted. But many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord. There's nothing you can, you just, you just think it says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters. And when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something that's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy. A ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people. The possibility that you see before you is what you become. That's what Jacob did to the animals. He simulated what he wanted them to become. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God. 
and you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience i thought all wealthy people hate god i thought all wealthy people are indisciplined cooks here i'm seeing a man that loves god then you have the opportunity to see his offering you have the opportunity to see his tithe you have the opportunity to see his prayer and in it his righteousness endures he will leave you with a mark you will go back and say mama i know we are in this hut but there is a better life egypt i know there's cucumber and there's carrots but there is canaan mama there is canaan let's trust god for grace and in the name of jesus i'm speaking to you may you be the one to lift your family out of this land. please sit down exposure exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart are we together you never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand because every time they paid your school fees you were the last you never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money it's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive that there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of god not luck Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what will discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us our educational background is very poor till today we are still fighting that warfare let me tell you where it started from it started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to you went to a school that you sat on stone now i'm not insulting you are we together yes a school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know because that's what is obtainable are we together how you pass your JSC is now that you know it was mercy and favor because you were certainly not ready now let me tell you if you come from that kind of background you will be surprised the first thing you have to manage is complex not assimilation the moment you find yourself in the company of other people their confidence will intimidate you you will have to fail for a long time before you start building your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching to manage your complex just a question they ask you stand up and you cannot say your name again you don't fail because you are bad you fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with exposure is powerful exposure is powerful the same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. 
Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think his whole template was warfare and aggression? That was what he termed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the scene and it was terrible, especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight to fight between myself and my father. Everything was aggression. You bring cold water for him to wash his hand. He won't say you are wrong. He will slap you. You fall with the whole thing. Then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before. How did you manage that situation? Now please, don't you ever see my father. And my father is a born again loving man right now. He's a healthy and wonderful man. Are we together now? Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that, honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body. There's only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah, Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a crook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. 
and this is where the internet becomes a blessing you don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your your yourself but your mind can go there remember i've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere your body must follow it doesn't matter what the resistance is yes you don't have the privilege to have been born in lagos you don't have the privilege to have been born in the u.s you don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the western worlds apostle i don't even know the name of my village the last time i checked i didn't exactly see it there that's not the issue your body may not be able to go there but god has orchestrated such that your mind can go there everybody around you was a bad father a wicked man a bad mother a wicked woman and god can just lead you to one 15 minute video on youtube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies everybody say exposure there's no excuse in our world today for remaining small even financially there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure are we together number two thank you the second key to productivity please write it down is creativity and innovation creativity and innovation the second key to productivity remember i told you productivity is a weapon you don't just fight by prayer alone you don't just fight by fasting alone your productivity is a weapon as god is exposing you and exposing your mind you are fighting a warfare that you do not know it's a warfare for your destiny while you are exposing yourself you are exposing it for your children for your children's children and then number two creativity write this down what is creativity creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas imaginations and dreams into reality creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas your imaginations and your dreams into reality hmm. i saw this definition and it was so instructive it also involves the act of turning your um, transforming your ideas imagination dreams into reality full stop it also involves perceiving the world in new ways comma finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena it involves perceiving the world in new ways finding hidden patterns making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena look up please the first manifestation of the holy spirit in the bible was not as a revealer but as a creator there was darkness genesis chapter 1 it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and then verse 2 says now the earth was dark and void and formless is the hebrew word tohu abohu confusion and chaos and the bible says the spirit of god hovered around the face of the waters because creation recreation was about to start the first manifestation of the holy spirit was as a creative spirit and listen to me if you will conquer the king of tyre and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of god then you must be creative the spirit of invention the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit please hear me any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators there is no reason for competition again creation is the key the ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit please give us ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or imagine the word there is imagine it says according to the power that worketh in us 
creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I, I'm not being insulted, but you ask a graduate a simple question. Just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures. Change five to seven. Change this to and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of a magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let, let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah. Telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new, you go, they apply for a job looking for 80 people and about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry. But there is a way. There is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The, the employment in any nation is private sector driven. There is no nation that the government handles their employment. No. Government has only limited parastatal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And because they are working on cutting costs, usually they will make sure that as much as possible, they cut cost. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, Technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ five people and five computers. 
737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people one of their most successful products but with that many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient every businessman does business for profit I hope you know bank is business bank is not government property it's somebody's business look at graduates now all around there is nothing because there is a system and please listen to what I'm saying because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us rid ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you and while that is happening satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high it's a double-edged sword so that whatever direction you come from you will be attacked listen the average salary within this system is not more than 20 to 30 thousand listen carefully am i telling the truth there are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is 20 to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know no matter how careful you are in this life, 20 to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and it's more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000 and everybody saying oh yeah oh, now that God has blessed you we were there for you 20,000 divided by 10 so why won't your prayer life be affected why will you be able to pray where will you get the resources to marry no not marry <laughs> watch this where will you get the resources to marry? I'm, not, I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry? You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing, remember you are born again. Remember you are filled with the spirit of God. And Satan says exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithe. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity listen to me creativity and innovation there is a spirit in man my brothers and sisters there is a spirit in man there are men and women that must arise let us not pray in tongues for nothing we are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground the world does not understand that language the language that conquers babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee 
his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions, uncommon manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this, and I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue, I told them, I said, I don't have this time. And they gave me time, 8.30. I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me. I sat down and did BVN. Is there anything, sir? Would you, are you happy? Would you like a drink? I said, ah, look at how unfair life can be. Listen to me. This is not some boasting or bragging. I want you to be apostolic in your understanding. This is not about money at all. This is about your soul and the gospel. Are we together now? Yes. Let us not keep our children in captivity, my brothers and my sisters. Standing between your parents and your children is you. We are that bridge. You can transfer what you received. Or you can say, Lord, let me be the one to suffer it. Let my child not go through what I've gone through again. And God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be... This is, this is where, sincerely speaking, I have a little challenge with we men of God. We continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them. It's wickedness. It's a scam. Do you know how available people will be when they are financially free? Financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life. Most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, 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 hey. Yahweh. creativity 
creativity, creativity, that God will anoint people to be creative, do new things or old things in new ways, that you set a pace. My brothers and my sisters, let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria. No, it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller, but there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we used the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen, the instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it. That the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the, way, the, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood... And I looked, I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen to people. Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the pain? When you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Gino says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child in the name of Jesus. No, no, I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel, at the expense of the truth. But this will be a blind, foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity. Listen very carefully. God is teaching us something tonight that will save us. Exposure. Creativity. The mind that thinks. The mind that works. Spirit inspired mind. The mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. Bet solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon. Of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now. 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extramoral lesson. It's a VIP extramoral lesson. And it started like two children, three children, right in her house. And those students were behaving exceptionally well. But more than that, she was teaching them character character and then she will play koinonia messages too these children were changing in remarkable ways 
and the parents started recommending their circle of influence. That's always what happens when you penetrate one circle. They will call the others like them to you. And like play, like play, this woman would collect 10,000 naira per month. As at the time that I was talking with her, she had like 50 children. Only God knows how much she has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and it's the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind, something on your mind and change your life change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. The person's cloth, they wrote $400. Then his, his tie, they wrote $20. And then his head, they wrote $0. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything. Up. It's not only power to shake. No. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your heart on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakatoske Parakata from heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray, please pray. Sabra Nekatala Koto Sasiata. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you, you will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? kings 
that God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman. True story. And I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing he saw a mowing machine. Machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And say, sir, I'm a young man. I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have um, any, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine, I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed and said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers flowers they to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one and something comes from heaven and changes your life for as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better my brothers and my sisters let me tell you you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age. Are we together? I know a woman, a dear precious woman in Lagos. Every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry, I'm very quick to order her, her products, health drinks, completely organic 100 percent, because the need to live long and live healthy you see when you are poor is not a concern because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this but by the time god helps you small you find out that at a level is a serious concern and this this woman started selling health drinks and you know beautifully packaged and only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents let them take it and let them be blessed the gold is not far from you when the spirit of creativity comes on you you will see what others don't see it's true anything can bless it depends on how it is served are we together there's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local, you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it. Even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness rebuke excuses there has to be a way out of it the warfare that is executed through creativity only creative men can survive upon that mountain there is a way out there is a way out there has to be a way out of struggling hallelujah Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity. The third key to productivity. One is exposure. Two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive. The third key is competence. 
the ability to standardize your results hmm. competence the ability to standardize your results maintain quality predictable quality predictable quality anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation I know if you are a lesson teacher I already know what a child will get because you are there if you are a chef I already know the food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow you are not competent competent is a product of mastery the mastery of the laws that govern that operation predictable competence listen to me when your results are not standardized kings will not come to you kings do not come to a fluctuated result stability for kings mean mastery so when you stabilize and standardize your results whether spiritually intellectually or otherwise you call the attention of kings the leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results you cannot keep fluctuating forever as a man of god as a businessman as a career person there must be a level of standardized results everybody say competence be strict on yourself set a high standard on yourself don't celebrate mediocrity just because you do something small challenge yourself think global think global think global you can start small but let your mind be global are we together i was listening to one of dr miles monroe's mentees and he was sharing a story that when dr miles was alive he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says young man you have a fabulous grace you are charismatic but you are not you are not vocal and articulate and if you want to go into the communications industry you have to be vocal and articulate the gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys and so they just speak slangs all around and he said no if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people you want them to call your attention then you must pay the price to learn and he says wow he was touched and he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself he went that far and that gentleman today is the one who heads miles monroe's church dr burroughs he made up his mind that he was going to develop himself learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent don't wear tomorrow's cloth today you walk naked tomorrow don't eat tomorrow's food today you will die of hunger tomorrow don't be ashamed of rising gradually but insist insist i got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers and for one of them when i got to see what she does i was blown away i was i was so i was impressed beyond imagination i said you mean you do this she said yes i said no if this is what you do then the sky is your limit the world needs to know that you do this listen let me tell you when you are competent don't be afraid to let the world know that i am here you bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world the fig tree had no fruit but it was calling the attention of jesus when jesus came hungry he cursed it that's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready but when you are ready and you've done your homework please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility god has put something here come and see that's why we boldly open up and we tell people god is doing something great in zaria come and see when i travel by the grace of god to go for ministrations i go with confidence i know that the people will never be the same because the message is powerful 
and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you and they are noticing the fluctuations around your results. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth and my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man a very very big and wealthy man and then he was encouraged to do a good job and I'm sure he may be listening now and when he sewed the clothes for that man from that time that man started calling him. Now he asked him, I heard recently again, to make another set of clothes. Let me tell you, competence is addictive. When people meet competent people, they don't easily let them go. No, there are not many competent people in the world. You can only complain for a while, you will come back. Be so competent that you become an endangered species. I remember years ago, a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a, uh, what they call these people that, makeup artist from Kano. And I asked a question. I said, does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day? The wedding day is not the day of trial and error. If you are not competent, provable competence, Kings and queens will not call you. Listen, when you become competent, you can name your price. And the world will still say thank you. Is God blessing you? Competence. You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, oh God, um, now that the job is not coming or what I read. No. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. Listen, koinonia. I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced and that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life is changed do to me what you want listen some of us our parents may have failed but turn them into a success by being successful so that they can say my assignment was to give birth to you and since i gave birth to you i may have failed in every other thing but because you arrived successfully your success has turned me back to a success The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names and coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. 
Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a cause. Being in the north is not a cause. Being a Nigerian is not a cause. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly by the Spirit of God say, Apostle, look, we are writing this. Let this not be an issue. Not moral support. No. That people like here who will be so blessed and sign a million Bibles and say, please take them to the Northeast. Noiseless impact. Are we together now? There are many of our children in this ministry. Some of them, you see them come and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall, but because I came. Ah, I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. You know your impact by what people do around your birthdays. That you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed. People should be excited and know that my God, this blessing to my life, what an opportunity to celebrate him. There are people today, you still look at their grave and their grave is a salmon. You can stand on their grave and live inspired. He came, he saw, he conquered. productivity the ability to trust God for an innovative spirit listen turn your ideas to products and services you are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services served with excellence until they become products and services you are only worthy of commendation not reward I cook once in a while I'm very good but that's just how I am hey that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is I don't know but I thank God that there are people rising already here and there it is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen, one of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge yourself. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. 
I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I say I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain, where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage, but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves. That out of Zaria, God will spring forth something that will shift this nation. Men and women who defy unemployment. Men and women who defy mediocrity. And your productivity will open the gates and the king of Tyre will watch you and you will pass and sit on that mountain and call for nations to come and they will come. Listen to me. We are going to have a few minutes to pray and just where you are, I'd like you to pray. Are we together now? Worship team, just give us, just play something for us and then you pray. You are going to cry for your destiny. Tonight's prayer, you are not interceding for anybody. You are saying, Lord, there has to be something uncommon in my life. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of having what everybody has. It is the reason for jealousy. It is the reason for envy. Lord, put something upon my life. Something uncommon. Are you ready to pray? Expose my mind. Grant me the grace to be creative. Grant me the grace to be competent.
pray the endless expectation of creation I waited the manifestation of sons no excuse for poverty no excuse for failure no excuse for mediocrity Lord I cancel those excuses tonight I cancel those excuses I cancel those excuses I have a mind that thinks I have a spirit that can think there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty can make men of understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cause the spirit of laziness. Laziness. Physical laziness. Mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I'd like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Those following online, pray. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Ala baranda skabaraka to shebre degetas. Lekete parusa segete marakata. Embrakata barato soto preketesh. Sabrende segete leva karyada vos. Rakata baba kata paranda sadaba katosh Eprekete nekete parato sadekete Rekete kete kete balada bos Hallelujah Hallelujah Listen We are praying two more prayer points and we are done I believe in diversification but I also believe in mastery you are going to pray Lord what is that one thing the area you want me to be a master in incontestable unarguable reveal to me lift your voice and pray Lord is it agriculture Lord is it finance is it in my career is it in the academia I cry for the spirit of revelation Show me, oh God, the one thing that will set me apart and bring honor to your name through my life. Please pray, concentrate and pray, concentrate and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up, please. One book that was written by T.D. Jakes, Woman Thou Art Loose, one idea from heaven. He wrote that book and it changed his life and set precedence for a conference that is one of the premier world conferences today for women. One book purpose-driven life that a man wrote changed and turned his life around one idea called uber in an app that was invented far away from africa is working like fire here in africa what if god gives you the cure for aids what if do you know that i found out that there is no sickness on earth now that does not have a medical cure. I mean that has been found. HIV is not incurable. I mean medically. I, I'm not pleased with due respect to the medical council and all the medical people. These are my personal opinions. I'm not speaking on behalf of the ministry, nor am I speaking on behalf of the nation. I'm telling you by spiritual revelation and by intelligence, that there is a cure for it. There is a cure for cancer. 
there is a cure for all these things the only problem is that those who have found the cure have not learned the systems and because you belong to a harsh world and a harsh environment that this most of these things were in many respects intentionally manipulated to victimize Africa so an individual that rises like that will be fought over but there are cures not one not two I have spoken personally with people that have these cures. Let me tell you sincerely. Are you ready to pray? Lord, that one thing that will put upon my life, that will take the sorrow of lack and want forever, that I can leave something for my children's children. Please pray. The last prayer point and we're done for tonight take my eyes to the problem that holds my wealth take my eyes don't run away from problems take my eyes show me oh god in life and destiny where is the problem show me the goliath that my throne is connected to i'm not afraid to face that goliath it may take time but i will prevail lift your eyes and pray lift your voice and pray Lord, take my eyes, take my mind, take me to the problem, the issue that I can solve, that will bring me into my financial Sabbath, that will take my family out of a realm of obscurity and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shared with you, listen, I shared with you some time here about a dear man of God who was going to pray for me. I, you know, just went, sowed a seed into his life, and then he looked at me and it was time for him to pray for me. And he said, Oh God, create a problem that only him can solve. You know, I stood there with my heart that is for the body of Christ. I said, I don't know if I like this kind of prayer. I mean, I don't like things that try to outshine people. I'm not that kind of person. And so what kind of prayer is this? But the man had prayed his prayer. But when I sat down and I thought about it, I knew that he was not speaking from a standpoint of jealousy. Listen to me. Your similarity, Mike Modoc says, creates your comfort. It is your difference and your uniqueness that creates your reward nobody will pay you for being like another person they will only reward you for being unique there can be 20 of you in a city but you can stand out the same way there are millions of men of god across the earth but there can be a unique imprint of god's grace upon your life are we together now i decree in the name of jesus christ the grace that wakes people up in the night and shows them witty inventions may that grace rest upon you let me pray it again the grace that wakes people then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night. Then the secret, there is a grace 
that taps men in the night and say, wake up, your destiny is about to rise. May that grace speak over your life. Listen to me. I decree and declare that every fear of failure, whatever is keeping you down, people will laugh at me if I fail. How can I take this step? I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. For those of you honestly trusting God for capital, that you know that you have sincerely done your homework, you just need that push. I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I declare, in a way you cannot explain, I channel resources to you. I channel resources from the ministry of destiny helpers. I channel strength resources to you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, your lifting will require a networking of like minds. I connect you to similar minds. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, you are already doing great things. But you just need the courage to scale up to a level that becomes enviable. Both the courage and the grace, I release it upon you now. Listen. There are some of you, God is calling to dimensions that people fear going there. Because nobody has gone there and succeeded. I exempt you and I declare you will succeed. For some of you, this innovation will come in dreams. You will lie down to sleep and your whole sleep will be a dream. You will wake up and do exactly what you saw and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from tonight. That between now and next week. That everybody under the sound of my voice here. Must find an area in his life. Where you can channel energy to be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let me pray finally. Your soul will never go down because of money your work with god your passion for the things of god your sense of honor your sense of submission your your sense of recognition of the authority of god will never deplete while you rise in the name of jesus ah, somebody needs to arise oh. somebody needs to arise you, you need to be angry. You need to be angry. You need to be angry. Angry at your current level. In one minute, just pray in the spirit. I will see continue, but just pray in one minute in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Remember, the same is true. Remember, Sir Isaac Newton taught us that anybody will remain in a state of rest or uniform motion, it will remain there for as long as it is kept there, except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. That means your destiny will remain where it is until a force from heaven comes to push it. Listen, I came tonight as a prophetic midwife to tell you where you have stand. It's enough. It's enough. It's time for you to move for God's sake. It is enough in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise from these ashes. It's time for you to fly like the eagle that you are. Micah 2.10. Give it to us, please. Ah, 
Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. This is a prophetic word for someone. It just came to my spirit now. Read it from the depth of your heart. Are you ready? One to read. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sword destruction. If you remain at that level, it will destroy you. Arise, it is not your rest. This is not your place. You are an eagle. Stop dwelling around with chickens. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray this scripture in one minute. Lord, I arise. I arise. It's time to arise. This is not my rest. I arise. I depart from this level. I arise. In the name of Jesus, spiritually I arise. Financially I arise. As touching the greatness that you have placed upon my spirit, I arise. Someone pray, this is not my rest. This is not my rest. I refuse to settle for less. Man of God, pray. Thank God for what God has done. So far in your ministry, but this is not your rest. Evangelist, pray. This is not your rest. Prophet, pray. Politician, pray. This is not your rest. Professional, pray. This is not your rest. Please pray. This is a miracle service. You have prayed yourself to a new level. This is not my rest. In business, this is not my rest. As touching the call of God, what I saw in my vision is yet to happen physically. I will give him no rest because this is not my rest. Financially, this is not your rest. listen listen look up everybody what does it take to live where you are to the next level on the part of God power on your part anger and hunger two things anger and hunger are required ingredients to break through your current season if you are not angry enough you will remain there giving excuses and if you are not hungry enough you cannot be filled man of god you will remain at that level of the anointing praying for 100 people and having only one person getting healed it won't work that way the nations won't place a demand upon you that way that is the honest truth professional uh -uh. not at that level Someone is going to pray. Father, I am tired of this level. I am both angry at this level. Thank you for this level. But Lord, I know that I am overdue. When a baby stays more than nine months in his mother's womb, he calls for concern. When a baby stays in his mother's womb, if it is before nine months, that's fine. The baby has to be patient. But above nine months, doctors will tell us there is a problem. Lift your voice and pray. Bring a performance, oh God, at another level. Bring a performance in ministry. Bring a performance in family. Bring a performance in my finances. Bring a performance in my destiny. A 
empowerment from heaven the grace that turns dreams to their reality outside are you praying inside are you praying Shatta branda gata kakosko toprash ela kata branda zagatesh kalika proska sinekata manda praka toshko dobla zikete preskia the Holy Ghost coming upon your life hallelujah hallelujah please listen when God answers your prayer how does he answer it by giving you power God answers prayer by sending power the power that turns that desire to its reality now listen i'm going to pray on your prayer request but before i start ministry you are going to pray on it by yourself and declare that lord in this season this and that and that make your request known as you pray please do not keep quiet And don't say God cannot do it all. Don't entertain unbelief. You don't have to lift it up. Even if it's written somewhere, you just begin to pray. Mention everything by name. Father, it is within your power to make great. It is within your power to prosper. It is within your power to lift. Someone pray. hallelujah please hear me listen carefully please in the name of jesus can i tell you i know definite times in my life where certain levels of empowerment came and i knew the change when we started this work you see and i say this with every sense of responsibility and humility as at the time this work started this thing called the power to get wealth was not there. There were ideas. I was reading materials and learning because I knew that doing ministry with integrity will need resources. And I didn't want to go around inconveniencing people every day. God's people will give, but church can't be about money every time. And then you can't be demanding money from people and not release the grace that empowers them. Do you know, let me tell you, when the anointing of god rests upon people who truly love you and they are blessed you don't even have to ask them for anything they will be too grateful to live they will never allow you to beg for tea and bread not with them there are people who have the hearts to give listen something is about to fall here right now that's why i wanted to listen i remember praying and studying i had learned principles and a day came, I had to study the life of Abraham, David, and study these people. I said, I found a missing link. I was already anointed though. But just because you have, the anointing is not like a general purpose tool. Uh -uh. The anointing is assignment specific. The anointing for prosperity will not bring healing. No. Their allocations are different. You can have a first aid box with many drugs. They are all called drugs. You cannot carry the drug for high blood pressure and swallow it for headache. You are causing trouble.
the design they are all drugs you go to a doctor a professional and he will diagnose you oh you have malaria he will give you the drugs for malaria even if you have malaria and another sickness most times doctors will choose which one to treat first when you are fine they will change the drug and treat the other thing many of you have received many impartations you can know the one that is missing this night don't keep quiet but as far as god spoke to me oh, this issue of the power to prosper i've done teachings on prosperity many of you have given but i want you to be angry know that god is able to help men you are ebenezer you are ebenezer this i know about the helper of men you are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer Listen You are Ebenezer The lifter of men You are Ebenezer God can help men stop struggling alone You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer I remember praying and crying to God and say, Lord, this work is enormous. The apostolic and the prophetic ministry requires a lot. Let this grace for God's sake, come upon my life and also come upon this vision. The power to prosper can be on you as a man of God and not be on your ministry. You will prosper while the ministry suffers. The power to prosper can be on the ministry and not on you. The ministry will prosper and leave you to suffer and you will start compromising. Can I tell you this? When that grace came, with all due respect and honor to Jesus, I knew it has come to stay. The Bible says, listen, it says on the day of Pentecost, all of a sudden they saw what looked like cloven tongues and it came and rested or sat. It didn't visit and go back. There are graces that can sit and rest on you. When it stays on you, that is it. I submit to you with all humility every devil and every principality from hell knows that this is a ministry God has helped the ministry is not the building the ministry is you and you must answer that name this night in the name of Jesus Christ it does not matter what spirit of poverty has tied down people in your family you saw people educated to phd but they could not build a single house that is a wicked spirit when your level of intellectual investment does not match your financial rewards something is wrong with that equation and then number two we are going to pray that god will move us do you know let me tell you this any sincere man of God who loves his people, your greatest joy is not your personal testimony. If someone buys me a car today, or buys me a plane, or builds me a house, thank God for all of that, but that is not really the testimony I'll come and share here. My greatest joy today is to sit down and hear people saying, I came from a family with nothing, serving idols, and now I am on fire for Jesus, loving Jesus, and see what God has done. That's right. Now, that's a testimony. You must be a wicked leader to rejoice over your results as above and against the people God has sent you to. The real joy of a leader is not his personal testimony. But to know that God's people are growing in leaps and bounds, can I tell you, man of god this may be a secret for you to learn when there are genuine testimonies not stage managed not exaggerated genuine workings of god's power in your ministry it is impossible for that ministry to be empty
Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. The last prayer, and then it will be a very quick one in this place tonight. Father, I vow that as you cause me to be great, it will not distract my work with you. Rather, it will give me an opportunity to serve your purposes. Lift up your voice and pray that sincere prayer. Someone is praying. Pray and let my God surprise you tonight. Pray and let the one who backs us up surprise you tonight. Lord, that my greatness will not be an interruption to my spiritual life. It will not be an interruption to my love and my fire for you. That is usually the condition. If the nations will see him through your greatness, if the nations will know him through your greatness, then there is no limits to what he can do. If that greatness will not bring pride, arrogance, Hallelujah. I wish I had the liberty to share some of my testimonies. But sometimes we live in a world where people misunderstand everything men of God say. Once you say A, people will say you said A to Z. And it, it turns out to not even edify people again. But I will tell you one or two. Listen carefully. I remember a time when a real estate company came and met me and they said sir God gave us an instruction that everywhere on earth we build an estate that will build a house for you it's our covenant with God anywhere on earth across the globe for as long as this company exists just know that anywhere you see us building an estate I don't know how many estates they have built now across the world if if you tell me the power to prosper does not work think again hallelujah i remember a company of wealthy people who came and met me and said apostle god said we should make you a non-executive board member of this company what for what do you people do this and that and that and that this is the instruction God gave. So what will be my contribution to your company? That spiritual advantage. You represent the ark of God to our business. I'm sorry, yo. I'm sorry. You see, this is why sometimes some, it's good to say certain things to just help you know that the man standing before you here is not talking nonsense. Let me tell you, if you think this is just a preacher's talk motivating you, think again. I submit to you with all humility what it takes to run koinon, one koinonia service is what many people may use for conferences. Believe me when I tell you. What it takes to run one koinonia service. You've never seen anybody come here to cry, to manipulate, to say this and that. You see, when God sends a word to Jacob, he lights upon Israel. We are not the inventors of these things. We also received it from the carriers. He said, go to them that sell and buy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our world today only wants people to brag. Once you are bragging and making noise, doing a lot of things, aha. Uh -huh. But once you are modest and humble and you live your life with modesty, sometimes we say these things not to attract conflict. That every devil in hell knows that till Jesus comes, this ministry will not know poverty. Just believe me when I tell you. No, 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 no. It's not a prayer point. I'm telling you what has happened. 
it will only be from glory to glory it's not pride please i'm sorry if it looks like i'm arrogant i'm only describing for you what must start happening in your life from this night <laughs> apostle i'm coming from a background where nobody knows me apostle right now as i'm standing here i'm in debt of one billion five hundred million fine rest you are not the first to get into debt please there are people who have been into debt of billions of dollars and god brought them out find rest can i tell you for anyone who is owing here business is not what you use to solve debt prophecy go and read your bible every time you are in debt let me save you trouble it's not doing another business that will bring you out it is the power of prophecy alas master for it was borrowed We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a move. hallelujah at the count of three we are going to pray in fact please my people hold your hands let me start with you people this is my dear leaders look at me in the name of jesus may this power to prosper come on you take that place right now in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead i release you to strange dimensions of prosperity and increase that people will arise and begin to help you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus be shifted to a new level mysterious dimensions of kingdom wealth even by the power of god now i decree and declare at the count of three i want you to shout jesus please bring those under the anointing some of you come from families where nobody has risen my god is about to lift you are you ready now father may this anointing this man to come upon your people please bring them out at the count of three one two three shout jesus take that grace now take that grace now bring them out please take that grace now i lift you by prophecy from where you are i shift you to a new season Please help those, my God. Please, whether you're an usher or not, just help the ushers. We have to hurry up now. Someone's life is changing. I don't care what financial situation. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, such as I have, give I unto you. Step into a new season of prosperity. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, you are changing my life, changing my story. Please bring them out very quickly. Let's hurry up. If you can, as many as you can. If you can't bring them out, that's all right. But we have to hurry up. Someone pray. Don't wait till you fall under the anointing. Open your mouth and begin to pray. A renaissance of financial possibilities from your lowly estate my god is lifting you hallelujah where's jimmy please arrange for him to come and sing that song the lifter of men just the chorus david damn you help whether it's a guitar or whatever if the keyboardist cannot play let someone help him very quickly please please bring them out quickly Bring them out. My God, something is breaking out here. Outside, inside, those following from any nation, the power of God to lift and to prosper is resting upon you. My story is about to change. You are the 
Hear me. Hear me. Some of you, by reason of this anointing, I'm seeing at least 13 people. At least 13 people. At least 13 people. Your destiny is not even in this country. This is what I'm seeing as God is showing me. Right now, that anointing is going to come upon you. Don't ask me how it will happen. Parande shekete balata. I relocate you now by prophecy. Go to your place of prophecy. Go to your place of destiny. I pick you up from where you are. The land where you must prosper. May my God take you there now. May my God take you there now. and whichever region where your prosperity is tied I shift you by prophecy go to that region now I release you let the limitations leave you now can I tell you this it is a dangerous thing to be in a place and there are people who are watching me you are outside this nation, but your destiny is in this nation. You are roaming around across the globe and finding out that even when you go to a place of plenty, there is no peace because you must be in your assigned place. I relocate you back to your place of assignment. Can I tell you this? Hear me. Hear me. All through my time of ministry, I'd been in Zaria. I'd become so emotionally connected there. But I knew when the season was done for my assignment there. It was a very difficult thing. But I knew that if I do not move where God is moving, as far as my assignment is concerned. Some of you, this is the simple key you came to receive. You can be roaming about. There are some of you who want to travel abroad. It's not in the blueprint of your destiny. You may visit and come back. But just because you hear that people are roaming around, there are still people suffering in every nation. Don't just emotionally enter the plane and go and die. My life will soon reveal You are the lifter of men Lifter of men I will hold on hear me I want to pray for those who are in any kind of financial trouble watch the power of prophecy bring you out of any financial situation hear me there are people some of you are owing some of you made careless business decisions and as it is right now it is only the God of heaven who can lift you I pray for your spiritual life and I'll pray again but this night we want to deal with these things some of you are under corporate debt you may not be the individual in trouble, but you are under corporate debt. Your organization is owing all kinds to the millions and billions. God can help men. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by this anointing, anyone here who is in any kind of debt, 
or financial situation personally corporately ministries that are owing and are in trouble businesses that are owing and are in trouble individuals that are owing and are in trouble in the name of jesus christ come out of that debt now come out of that debt now by the ministry of destiny help us come out of that debt now hallelujah there are spirits that have moved from family to family ensuring everybody remains poor a family of everyone educated nobody working everyone educated nobody the highest salary may be twenty thousand yes we are grateful but that cannot be enough now i want to pray fire will come upon you god is going to set you free because there are many hear me your salvation tonight is not just for you alone it's for your family members there are many of you i decree and declare any family here under a spiritual yoke maybe something happened in time past and a cause or a pronouncement was made over your family that keeps recycling poverty and financial struggles right now at the count of three please bring them under the anointing as you shout jesus that altar will catch fire now please bring them out are you ready one two three shout jesus i break financial yokes please bring them out i break financial yokes every spirit recycling patterns of poverty every spirit whether you are an usher or not please help those under the anointing every spirit outside inside following online responsible for lack and poverty and want as the church of the lord jesus christ and by the blood of the eternal covenant we set you free tonight 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 open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray i release myself from every embargo someone pray i decree and declare a prophetic release every embargo every yoke it tied down my father it tied down my grandfather it tied down wicked people I am a righteous man in Christ and I decree and declare that by the blood of the eternal covenant I appropriate my healing and my deliverance One more minute, you are praying. I break free from this embargo. I break free from this embargo. I break free from this embargo. I break free. Financial embargo, I cost you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of meeting and learning from extremely wealthy people. Extremely wealthy people. I am not in ignorance. I submit to you by the privilege of God's grace as to the financial principles and the systems that make for the blessing. This prayer and this miracle service is by no means excusing your, your fortitude to comply with financial principles that bless you but let me tell you something and let me teach you something there are only two ways financial resources will enter your life only two ways number one value that is exchanged number two favor that is it there is no other way financial resources will enter your pocket your value packaged and turned into products and services Garnish with excellence and serve to a, a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. That is one dimension. But then the other is called favor. I want to show you how God restored Job. Job 42 verse 10. 
my life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men the lifter of men I will hold on through the storm this is for someone I will hold on through the rain my life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men the lifter of men. sing it one more time as a prophecy that I will hold on to the storm uh, I will hold You are the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Can I tell you this? There is no one here under the sound of my voice, or will there ever be, whose situation is worse than that of Job. Let me show you what God can do. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. Thank God for that, but we want to know how it happened. Are you ready? Next verse. Verse 11. <laughs> read with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you seeing how God restored him? Number one, then came to him all his brethren. Every next level and finances you are trusting God for is in the hands of men. Until the men come, you cannot get what is in their hands. It says, then there came unto him. Where were they when he was crying? The Bible says God turned. So how does God turn? He places something upon your life that will start compelling people to start coming. There came unto him his brethren and all his sisters and they that had been of his acquaintance before. They were the ones that made him prosper before. That means how did poverty come to his life something was taken away from him and everybody left physically how did god restore it something came i'm i'm showing you because it's something is about to come on you now please read it are you ready one to read then came there unto him all his brethren uh-huh and all his sisters and they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Now, here's the secret. Read. And every man. How many men? There is something that comes on you that makes every man bless you. Not just those who do business with you. Every man. Every man. Read on, please. One to go. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold. Can I tell you this? Some of you have gone through serious financial hardship. God organized this miracle service to bring financial healing. To bring financial deliverance. And I'm showing you how it happened. Because we are going to pray now. I've taught you the ministry of destiny help us. These are men anointed, commissioned by God to pay attention to your destiny. Not everyone is a destroyer. There are people who can enter your life like they entered the life of that my gentleman and turn his life around. Who would have told him that a year before or two years before, there were people in that football field before he came. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. every man gave him a piece of money every man gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold father who have you anointed in this season to hold my hands and move me to the next financial level i declare place the grace upon my life that will bring them to my destiny open your mouth and pray place that grace this is a miracle service make sure you are praying Place that grace upon my life, oh God, that will compel the helpers of my destiny to attend to me. Place that grace upon my life.
forget about where you have been pray pray I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word my story is about to change you are the lifter of men the lifter of men Lord I will hold on to the storm I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You are the lifter of men Hear me, believers, in the name of Jesus Please listen to me I submit to you by God That there are more than enough people in any city to be used by God to lift you nobody will come and lift you on their own I've told you this there is the power that rests upon your head thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters please place your hand on your head Just place your hand on your head father this is a miracle service where you are sorting people financially once and for all my god and my king upon every head right here inside all the overflows outside i am praying lord the grace that must rest upon them that will compel the helpers of destiny to gravitate towards them in the name of Jesus may that anointing rest upon you now may that anointing rest upon you now in the name of Jesus hallelujah please put down your hands who is Christy I'm hearing the name Christy my assignment tonight is to deal with the issues Christy who is that where are you coming from I want to pray for you I presume there may be many Christies but your life is about to change and in case I'm prophesying to people you open your heart and receive what God says to one he says to all are we together I don't mean to embarrass you but please hear me there's a prophetic word I won't ask the person to come out for social reasons there is a lady here a man kept you in a house hold on now let me finish the prophecy you don't know what I'm about to say just hold on let's be patient and let prophecy finish before so that you don't answer yes to something that a man kept you in a house listen to me that man is married with his wife but he kept you in a house somewhere you are in, in a relationship with the man and he kept you in a house somewhere I want you to know that that man is going to destroy you he has lied to you and made you believe that if he does not help you where will you get help I'm advising you in this miracle service in the name of Jesus and with every sense of responsibility I know it is not easy it's easy to tell people you are working in this and that you must be ready to help people when you want them to make that decision but let me tell you whoever that person is i'm speaking to you by the spirit i want you to pack out of that place because with what i'm seeing that man did not just keep you there there is something occultic that he's doing there you hear what i'm saying i'm speaking to you by the spirit of god back out of there he may be giving you 10 naira but he's taking the glory of what two million from you and we have to be careful as believers 
sometimes you know why it is important to empower believers like this because if we don't empower believers when people are desperate they will do anything for money they will come to church and remove the 10 percent and drop it but they know where they got it from so it's not enough to just criticize people and say you are this you are following men you are following women you are following whatever no 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 we have to empower people first then we'll tell them this is how it is done in the kingdom there are many parents today who are enjoying a lot of financial blessings from their children and dancing and they do not know the dirty and demonic things their children are doing to bring money and it's easy to insult them like we always like doing in church when we hear of people's situations we are not rational to sit down and think and approach it from a heart of love God brought you people out here by his spirit. I want to pray for you. Madam, your suffering has come to an end this night. Please leave her. Careful, careful, so you don't injure her. I know what I just saw. I want to pray for her. Hi. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You see, let me tell you something, my dear people. For as long as God brought you here this night, I assure you by God that the power that will stop you from receiving your testimony is not in existence. I'm looking at this woman in a vision and I'm seeing a woman suffering bad luck anybody that says he will bless this woman something must happen to them and they will neglect them if there is anybody like that people keep making promises tomorrow they will say next week they will say whatever is stopping them from reaching out to you I cast it to his root in the name of Jesus I cast it to his root in the name of Jesus hallelujah please don't 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 I, I don't want you to feel offended the, may god bless you madam i want to pray for you i'm seeing a woman you are a widow oh dear this woman has suffered oh this woman you are a widow and if i don't pray for you it's nothing at all is coming from anyone it's as if you don't have children it's as if nothing is happening you are you are quite an aged woman i don't know who that person is the lord is asking me to call that person and let me pray for that person you are a woman an elderly woman you are a widow but honestly as it is sincerely that you love god sincerely but absolutely nothing is happening this woman i'm seeing i know you came out but i'm seeing this woman at the overflow outside the overflow outside the overflow outside I'm not just praying for every widow of course I will pray for you if you come out but the particular person I want to pray for you are outside father you are the God that can open every door there is no mystery as to how finances come it is not magic it will always happen through men the Bible says good measure pressed down shaken together running over shall men give shall men give the lord called that name christy and i want to pray for you for some of you you are standing as altars over your family because god wants to wipe the tears of your family in the name of jesus christ the power of god will come on you right now and believe me the only thing that will bring you up stage here after this prayer is your testimony therefore i stretch my hands right now every embargo up over your finances an anointing is coming on you right now release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now in the name of Jesus I open this door in the spirit and I declare walk into your high places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family here you are owing medical bills you are owing as I'm speaking now you are owing medical bills even to the millions you are owing medical bills I don't know who that person is whether you are watching online or you are here it's like there's somebody let me tell you this I'm going to pray for the sick shortly do you know that many manifestations of sickness is actually an attack on your finances 
it's not about the sickness because there is a relationship between your health and your wealth the sicker you are the more your finances will tell to so when satan wants to attack your finances one of the ways he does is to plant a mysterious sickness it will not go up it will not go down it will remain there and keep eating finances if there is anything i know that can destroy finances overnight is health no matter how wealthy you think you are pray that you are not plagued or somebody around you plagued there are people who spend as much as a million naira every week to be alive if you have saved even if it's hundred million in how long we would have depleted everything people have had to sell their houses because of finances people have had to sell everything they spent their life building hear me God is able to lift you from that yoke I will be praying for we are not going to take testimonies that our time is gone we may not take testimonies of people to pray tonight I want to deal because we've not even gotten to greatness I must spend the next 15 minutes and flog this thing out it must step over your life honor and greatness we are dealing with finances Say to those that are fearful hearted, do not be afraid. It's a word of comfort to somebody. The Lord your God is strong and in his mighty hands when you call on his name. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary ones, Your God will surely come. He will come and save you. My God will come and save you. He will come and save you. Those of you who are here, the the the, the wither that came. Now let me tell you this. Do you know any day you see any widow or someone who is genuinely bereaved and incapacitated, even if it is ten naira you can give them, it is a blessing unto God. You see that? Remember the widow at Nain? She had lost all the men in her life. Her husband, a symbol of her strength and defense, had gone. And now her child, who represented her future, was also gone. When Jesus saw her condition, he said, no, we can't leave you this way. And he brought up the child. Nobody prays to lose anyone. But if and when it happens, it is important to stand with them and stand by them to pray. God is able to help. We can't promise you that every day everybody will be giving you money but we can promise you that something can be placed upon your life that will insist and ensure that you are not left without help let me pray for you in the name of jesus christ my dear look at me you're a widow you are standing for who your mom where is she don't cry Jesus is able to help you. You see, let me tell you this. You can't comfort people who mourn when your hand is empty. I hope you know that. Because after you pray for them and do whatever you do, some of them will stand and they're expecting that even if it's 10 naira, you put something in their pocket. And it's easy for us to make a lot of noise in church and talk and say this and that and that, God will do it. You must reject poverty in your life. There's no reason why you should remain the way you are, not after this miracle service. Father, I pray for these ones. You are the only one who knows how it feels, oh God. But in the name of Jesus, 
by your spirit you call them out to change their lives and I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ turn their lives around release that grace upon them your physical husbands may have gone but may God become that husband for you and ensure that your needs are supplied to the latter in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the hand of God rests upon your life I don't know but I just feel in my heart to say this and I say it respectfully anyone here who is a widow or who has lost a loved one and there are people who are troubling you in the name of Jesus Christ we agree right now may the troublers of your destiny go now now you see anybody who troubles a woman who does not have strength on her own under normal circumstances must be a wicked person don't cry in the name of Jesus I'm praying again anyone who is troubling you maybe something you labored with your husband to get and now just because he's gone people are bullying you and bringing all kinds of trouble I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic I decree and declare may your troublers depart from you right now in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead I use this once in front to pray for every other person and I decree in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God that anyone who is troubling any widow here and will not let her have peace except otherwise but I pray that if the fault is not from them may God show them mercy immediately in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I pray that every man destined and appointed by God to hold your hands no matter who and what you have lost especially your husbands I pray for you may God raise genuine people with no strings attached who will hold your hands and see that you don't cry again in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let's celebrate them as they go god bless you you will return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus are you ready for the next prayer to be great means to live where you are and go to the next level of your life to be great means to rise to a point where you can also be a blessing you can't always be the one looking up you need to rise to a point where you can look down and reach to others father whatever it takes for my greatness release it upon me someone lift your voice and pray don't be tired tonight is a good bargain tonight is a good bargain by the spirit go ahead and pray lord whatever it takes finance influence relationships results opportunities release it upon my life 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 hallelujah hallelujah please look up God is able to make people great from where they are to the next level Genesis 26 13 give us new King James Version please if you can NKJV read with me ready one to read and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous verse 14 hmm. 
for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants so the philistines envied him next verse 15. hold on hold on hold on go back to king james now i want to show you something because there is a name god is about to call someone for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of abraham his father so the man had struggles the bible takes out time to tell you he did not just become very great like that there were struggles they dug a well the philistines had stopped them and filled it with the earth 16. and abimelech said unto isaac he said go from us for thou art much mightier than we when you read the verses after for the sake of time it will tell you that he dug a well and they covered it he named it he dug a well they covered it and the third one they left him and he called it rehoboth he says for god has given me my own space my own space my own space i want to pray for you the grace for greatness is a real grace read your bible look at abraham read your bible look at sarah read your bible look at esther read your bible joshua gideon ordinary people you can start from where you are but you should not remain there you must rise for the bible declares that the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day what is greatness to be elevated to a position in life and destiny where you enjoy the blessings of productivity the blessings of influence and now you can reach down to people and also be a blessing to them in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed if that happens to you that is the epitome of greatness god wants to set us free from this life of always hoping that someone will rise and help you it is in your destiny to rise too i want to speak over your life do you believe in the power of prophecy When God makes you very great, listen to me, there are many quarrels and there are many issues that are unnecessary. Can I tell you? when joseph became great it was easy to forgive his brothers there are many family problems there are many extended age-long problems that become unnecessary when you become great if they had come to meet a struggling jacob uh, uh, joseph in egypt he would tell them you are wicked and evil people can i tell you many hearts and pain you are carrying in your heart is because you have not been consoled by greatness there is a way god lifts you it becomes unnecessary to discuss the past again did you hear what i said one of the ways god heals you from the past is to make you higher than that realm by far so that the issue of money of 1995 the issue of insulting you of two times it, it just becomes great people have little worries because god has so consoled them in the name of jesus the anointing that it takes to rise from where you are right now to the highest level of your call of your destiny of your business of your ministry by the power that raised christ from the dead please hear me i speak it to you in the name of jesus christ may that mantle like the dew of hammon let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now 
the lifting power of God let it rest upon you now can I tell you this you will be ten times greater than your contemporaries I say it again you will be ten times greater than your contemporaries even in all age I prophesy to you you will be ten times greater than your contemporaries hear me anyone here overdue for promotion and either by tribal sentiments or religion you have not been lifted I stand by the God of heaven and I decree between now and the next three months rise to the position that is due you now hear me one of the reasons why people do not rise to that position of greatness is because the people who are sitting there have not stood up can you hear me for as long as Vashti is still sitting Esther cannot be enthroned for as long the Bible never tells us whoever was sitting on Joseph's position either a space is created or the wrong people there must vacate it for you in any case and by all means I prophesy to you that anyone sitting on your seat of glory right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead I overturn 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 in business I overturn in ministry I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn until you sit there in the name of Jesus Christ and anywhere you must get to that they say there is no space by prophecy I shift the space left and right and create a place for you I say it again I shift the space left and right politicians business people professionals we create a space of relevance for you I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men Don't be tired Every word I speak is placing something on your head That night could not King Ahasuerus sleep hear me there are many people whose lives you have helped but there is a spirit that came upon them to give what is supposed to be to you to another person and you keep wondering how do I keep helping people some of you are not lazy you have helped many people in this nation in this city can I tell you this please look up one day I was reading the story of Naaman and the Bible tells us that a little slave girl who served his wife came and talked, she spoke to him. It was based on her recommendation and persuasion that the man went down to write a letter to the king and finally meet Elijah. Hold on. The Bible says when he found out he had been healed, he carried gifts. Is that true? He carried gifts because you didn't come to see a prophet empty handed. He carried gifts and he took to Elisha. Elisha rejected the gift and just healed him and Gehazi unfortunately out of a life of compromise and dishonesty got into trouble the Bible never shows us the gift he took to the slave girl I see the gift you took to the prophet who helped you but where is the gift of the slave girl whose persuasion was the one why you were healed there are many 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 people here you are the one that even brought so many people to koinonia here some of them have testified but where is yours that book of remembrance must be opened
now hear me please receive this very prayer the bible says mordecai heard a few people who were conspiring because his assignment was to be a watcher at the gate and he found out that there were people who were plotting to kill the king to kill a king that controls 127 provinces you must be wicked people and he revealed that plot and the people were hung in the gallows and it was documented but he was not rewarded and the bible says when his season had come that night just like this night let me say it again that night just like this night the king could not sleep and the king said bring me the chronicles and they opened it where the archives of people who did good you know my bible says withhold not good from them that it is due when it is within your power do not tell them go and come tomorrow when you can do it now it was within the power of the king to honor Mordecai but there had to be a spirit sponsored by the man Haman but that night when he opened the chronicles he said read it for me and he found there the good works of Mordecai let me speak to someone even if it was 10 years ago it was written did you hear what I said even if it was 10 years ago you helped for every time you help someone know Jesus for every time you help someone find salvation you help someone maybe get a job it was written and under a certain condition the book can be opened and he said what has been done to this man they said nothing he said who is in the chamber a man was there and they called him he said Haman what shall I do to a man whom my heart delights to honor and foolish Haman thought it was him so he decided to describe an elaborate system of honor that the king would take his robe and put it on such a man and he will ride upon the king's horse all through the cities and somebody will be escorting him and shouting bow the knee he said this is what should be done to the man that the king has honored he said quickly make sure none of these words fail go and do the same to Mordecai I want to declare to somebody while you are in church here may God open the book and cause people to start discussing how to lift you let me say it again while you are in the house of God here may somebody somewhere in Abuja in Lagos in London in US in the name of jesus christ may they wake up from sleep god will wake them and seize their sleep and open up the file of your kindness and remind them and insist that you are blessed i prophesy this in the name of jesus hallelujah something very interesting happened not too long ago a man of god called me and he said apostle you came over to our church to preach this was sometime last year and she said um, just to let you know that since that time we have been putting some seeds together months after you had come and gone there were people who said the Lord instructed them that they sow into your life and we had been collating those seeds and he said man of God we're joking with him he said I'm surprised can you imagine this that people will keep coming with seeds and I told him, I was going to tell him, okay, God bless you, just take the seed. He said, no, whatever grace that made these people months after you had left our church, I am the pastor in this church, oh, you see. A similar thing had happened to another pastor, a great friend of mine that I went to preach for. Somebody now called him and said, please, do you have Apostle's account number? The person said, what for? He said, I want to bless him and the only person I can remember is you. And he called me and we're joking. He said, how can a man call me? I'm a man of God too. And be asking me of another man's account number and i sent it to him and he made a transfer uh, as if i'm not there and we were just joking and laughing very good man but i thought about it it's terrible for blessings to pass through you to others and yet nothing stops for you every time people want to bless others you are the middle man you are the one who connects people who will now connect to your own in the name of jesus yours will not pass you by in the name of Jesus yours will not pass you by your job will not pass you by your increase will not pass you by in the name of Jesus hear me 
let me bring a word of comfort for some of you can i tell you the kindness you have been showing people has been building a house that you don't know of so that when it is time they will just bring you the key to a house that is already built i'm saying this like a joke but you'll be surprised and you will ask yourself when did i build this and god will say for every kindness for every act of love for every prayer for every intercession you were adding one block upon another let me prophesy to you again there are things that because you have made happen for others you will not struggle over to happen in your life in the name of jesus christ now place your hand if you're trusting god for healing i'll just speak over your life and then if you are yet to submit the prayer request let's do it fast those who are yet to submit the prayer request please ushers inside outside station it very quickly let's let's redeem the time i'm going to speak over your life tonight's service is dedicated to our finances and increase as god revealed but i'm still going to minister i know that there are people who came with all kinds of sicknesses and diseases the bible says and as he taught the power of god was present to heal place your hand on your chest or wherever you are trusting god for and i'm going to pray for you i will praise the lamb of god who sits upon the throne i will worship him and give a praise to him alone he who was and is and is to come i will sing before his throne forever now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare every spirit of infirmity i command by the power that raised christ from the dead it leaves your body now <laughs> by the blood that was shed on calvary's tree and by the eternal sacrifice of our lord and savior jesus christ i decree and declare right now let the power of resurrection touch your body the power of god is touching you right now be healed in jesus name back pain be healed in jesus name headaches be healed in jesus name please help them blindness be healed in jesus name growth in any part of your body dissolve now in Jesus name ear conditions be healed in Jesus name cardiovascular conditions be healed in Jesus name arthritis of all sorts be healed in Jesus name peptic ulcer be healed in Jesus name heart conditions be healed in jesus name hiv be healed in jesus name cancers be healed in jesus name diabetes be healed in jesus name respiratory conditions be healed in the name of jesus Uni urinary conditions be healed in Jesus name bone conditions be healed in Jesus name there's someone I'm seeing in a vision um, there's this thing the medical people call cholesterol you have an extremely high level it's not about weight for some reason and if i don't pray for you now with what i'm seeing it may kill you in the name of jesus you need to seek medical attention whoever that person is please seek medical attention but i'm still going to pray for you in the name of jesus by the mercies of god you will not die you will not die supernaturally may the lord help you high bp goes down now in the name of jesus swellings unusual swellings across your body from your head to your toe i declare be healed now there's someone always dreaming of death even if it's just a little nap you take you must have this dream of death in the name of jesus i curse that spirit now 
Now, whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, be healed now. Tonight, we may not have the time to come and take testimonies because of what we took our time to deal with. But please, whether right now or after the service, make sure you check yourself. And some of you may need to visit the doctors. You may need to visit our medical stand. When you find out that you have been healed, do well to register your testimony through our media department or you can even go to the PR stand afterwards and we'll give you an opportunity to share it in any of the services. Now stretch your hands, please. It's time to pray the general prayer over the request. Please, if there are more requests, let's do it very quickly. Stretch your hands. Remember, this is... I, I love to pray on our request because it is the most accurate representation of your desires. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Is someone stretching his hand here? I will kneel. You can do the standing. Let me kneel and pray over this. In one minute, I'd like you to stretch your hands and begin to declare, Father, you have visited me and the testimony will return back to me. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare. Somebody is praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, visit your people. May they know that you are the God of the universe. Grant results. Grant results, oh God. That by miracle service may they will only return with testimonies grand results strange results even by the spirit of god is someone praying we decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit we decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit we decree and declare strange visitations supernatural encounters turnarounds by the spirit For me to do I am that I am that's what God is asking someone tonight is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do Father, I bow my knees to you because you hear me when I pray and I thank you because the Bible declares that this is the confidence that we have in you that when we ask anything in accordance to your will you hear us therefore Lord I bow my knees over these requests 
kneeling on these requests requests that represent pain expectations disappointments prayer secret tears many tears repeated tears for some lord i cry unto you the god of heaven may your power rest upon this request and lord i pray that every single request here and those who are connecting online across the globe some hearts bleeding some hearts crying some hearts in desperate expectation for some of you your prayer requests here have time timing to it for some of you if the answers don't come by tomorrow it can affect you i pray and i call upon my god this night may he visit you from america to europe to asia to africa Nigeria here, Abuja, Lagos, Jos, Port Harcourt, Enugu, the Northeast, all the six geopolitical zones, and even here in FCT. In the name of Jesus, may the angels of the Lord be dispatched to all these regions. Taking, taking fearful answers to you. Every human agent who must partner with God for these requests to be granted answers we compel their ministry now and every force of darkness fighting the answers here in the name of jesus we terminate their ministry therefore in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit i decree and declare supernatural answers to these prayers in jesus name i pray 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 for some of you since you were part of this ministry you have never stood here to testify I decree and declare next week the stage is open for you I say it again next week the stage is open for you some of you may say apostle i'm a shy person it depends on what happened to you may god give you the testimony that you'll be too grateful to sit back there in the name of jesus christ some of you will not just come here and stand alone it's the whole family that will come and stand because everybody would have received the testimony in jesus name i pray amen and amen apostle i need jesus I need him quick I need him now there are people who are saying I came here I was introduced by a friend to come here to koinonia and now I am here I have seen the power of God but I confess that I do not want to go back without Jesus let's minimize movement and just allow a minute or two so that we honor the altar call there are others who are saying apostle I remember giving my heart to the Lord but as it is honestly my life has gone haywire i need restoration to my christian life now for those who are in this auditorium across the balcony and those outside i'm going to make this call right now very quickly we have a minute for you wherever you are don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to leave your seat and come and stand here as i count five you want me to pray with you you want to make it right with jesus that at the end of your days it will not just be that you came and you prospered and you received i will count one to five there has to be somebody coming to jesus and you want to rededicate your life join them i'll begin my counting now and all the other all other overflows please very quickly you come and stand in front of your projector uh, screens or your leds and then um you receive this prayer are you ready one let's celebrate them as they come two somebody is coming to jesus the God of all flesh is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Come to Jesus. He will give you a new beginning. Are you celebrating them? Please ce celebrate them as they come. Three. Apostle, I came here. I can't say I'm a sinner, but I cannot honestly say I'm saved. Join them. You can join them and be sure. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Join them and be sure of your salvation right now. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. You can know that you know that you know 
that you are saved are there still people coming win that war tonight run to jesus he'll give you a new beginning hallelujah thank you for the courage to come koinonia one more time let's celebrate them hallelujah thank you very much for the courage to step out every time we come to jesus we are assured of one thing that he will in no wise cast us away lift your right hand high above your head and please say this after me let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart say lord jesus tonight i have seen your power i have heard your word i know you desire to lift me so i come to you just as i am unable to help myself i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i confess that you are my savior i confess that you are my lord i confess that you are my king i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i go from glory to glory and grace to grace i'm a child of god amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones you have brought to yourself the bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i declare a supernatural miracle upon every one of you right now in the name of jesus even as you have confessed you are recipients of eternal life you go from glory to glory from grace to grace in jesus name i pray amen and amen thank you for making this bold decision may i request that you move to my right the counselors waving their hands to you let's celebrate them as they come as they go god bless you thank you very much please all of you let's celebrate them as they go they'll have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat god bless you please let's celebrate them very quickly hallelujah now let me say this before we wrap up i want to encourage everyone even though i know that we've exhausted this facility inside outside everywhere there are still so many people who need to encounter jesus christ encounter his power and encounter the the methodical mentorship that the communication of doctrine brings there are people who need to grow there are people who need to meet jesus there are people who need empowerment let me encourage you please make it a point of duty everyone who is part of this ministry globally is an evangelist and you owe a responsibility whether online or offline don't say we have exhausted this facility there are even if there are 15 20 000 people it is still not enough relative to the souls it's not just about the size of people that show that a man is a great man for as long as there is one soul out there who is yet to be saved for as long as there is one soul out there whose life is confused not knowing the ways of the kingdom we owe it to do the work of an evangelist make it a point of duty that you don't come to church alone come with your family members come with your friends come with those you do not know let them know that jesus saves let them know that jesus heals let them know that there is a home for them where their spiritual understanding can be upgraded where they can receive the accurate communication of doctrine do not neglect the gathering of the saints but then don't come alone let others to come he said for this promise is unto you and to your children as many as are far off hallelujah so let it be part of our kingdom responsibility as responsible people in this ministry to make sure that the work of evangelism in gathering and giving people an opportunity to be mentored to grow it is a corporate responsibility of everyone the lord will grant us grace in jesus name i pray let's rise up as we close after the grace i'd like you to greet someone by your left and right on your way out i decree and declare that your week beginning is blessed this grace you have received will start speaking immediately and you will only return with your testimonies in the name of jesus the lord preserve you preserve you spirit soul and body in the name of jesus christ let it be a profitable week for you in jesus name i pray 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.